Good afternoon. So I haven't been over here for two days. I have been busy, busy with work, but oh my God, has this place bloomed. And let me show you a few things that have changed. There's been an update on the tank. So I've only gone and got myself a new tank. Finally, I'm honestly, I'm over the moon. It's caged, it's nice and sturdy, and I'm over the moon. I gave that other tank all the chances it could have had, but it's just, it's just not... It's not stable enough. I'm worried that's one day, you know, those straps will snap or something. So the new tank's here. I've got to try and get rid of that other one now. But I'm over the moon. Today, though, there's so many things going to happen today. I'm definitely going to do them. But let me show you one thing that's turned up. Actually, two things that's turned up from my farmer Gracie bulbs that I planted and all the plants. Let me show you. So the honker black dahlias are now popping their heads up. And there's three of them there. And also, look. The canna lilies, I'm so pleased. Like they've just, they just come out of nowhere and I'm just over the moon and they just look beautiful right next to all that sweet pea. So today I'm gonna tackle a bit of the pond, do a bit of gardening, show you some of the updates that I've done. And yeah, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to pop to one of my local stores. I'm gonna pick up some pea gravel so I can just gravel all that pond. Then I'll get some pond plants then to bring in. I've got some of my pond. Friends are giving some, viewers are sending me some pond plants, which is absolutely fantastic. But one thing I am telling you now, I am going to this store and I'm not buying plants. Repeat after me, I am not buying any more plants. Like the day before, you're like a stone on my pillow. Don't make a sound when I shut the door. So what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna get the wheelbarrow and rinse it with a hose to get all the bits of gravel and rubbish off it. And then I bought some 20 millimeter pea gravel for the middle, which is a bit bigger, and then I bought some 10 millimeter one for the outside and the beach area up here. So <sighs> let's get that done. So I think my next job is to get this IBC tank on the plot. So I need to get rid of the other one, chop it up. I might just chop it in half and then offer the bottom part to a plot holder and maybe they can use it as a pond or something. Right, let's get that done. So I've decided to sow some digitalis, some foxglove. This is a mixed seed. And I think, if, you know, if I put them at the back of the plot by the pond, I think they look lovely. These from seed will take about two years, but I'm happy to invest our time in them. So you just basically just sow them now, early summer, put them in the polytunnel, and then in autumn, they should be a decent size, and then plant them out in the plot. They'll overwinter, They'll die back and the following year, perfect. A nice flush of foxglove. Now I will have to say though, if you have got pets or children that are in the garden, then obviously I wouldn't advise these because they are poisonous, but on a plot like this at the back of it, they'll give a nice woodland feel and they'll be out the way behind the pond anyway. So I've trimmed this down to 10 inches. Nobody on the allotment wanted it for a pond. So I've decided I'm going to use it as like a bottom watering system and it'll also be perfect once it's full of water
for putting the buckets of potatoes on as well. So they don't dry out. I can water from the bottom. And then once this water becomes a bit stagnant, I can empty it with the tap on the side as well. So it's perfect. I'm going to keep it for that. And it'll also, it's not that, it's not that deep. So I can slide it up against the shed as well when I'm not using it. So I brought some pond plants from home and look at this. Absolutely fantastic. Look at that lily. Beautiful. So at the moment it's looking a bit murky, but once the plants now are settling, they'll start oxygenating this pond because I've got some oxygenators put in there as well. And hopefully this will filter it and it'll look nice and clean. So every year or two, my home pond, I have to split, divide and try and get rid of the pond plants because they grow so quick in that pond. So it's nice that I brought some over. They're going to do well over on this pond now and that saved me a job of trying to rehome them to other people. So this area seems to be mole central and they're digging up in between all the patio slabs and the pavers. Oh, look at that bird now, it's come down. How lovely is that? It's walking around, having a little drink out of the pond. That's why I've got a pond. It's absolutely stunning to see the birds coming down and using it to drink. Where was I? So, yeah, so this area here is it's barky, it's woodlandy. So I think I'm going to take up the slabs, relay them more central here a bit. And then I'm going to put some nice pea gravel all in between these. And hopefully with some membrane down, Mr. Mole will decide to move on a little bit further up the plot. The pond is looking absolutely beautiful now though. I just love the fact that it's really settled in really, really well here. And when, you know, next year, these will all be bushed up, the hostas and all the grasses and all should hopefully expand and get bigger and really, really settle this in. And then at the back of that, I'm gonna put some more plants, a nice decking area of some nice planks, maybe some, um, you know, scaffolding planks all on that area. And then hopefully then that'll just overhang the pond a little bit. I think it looks stunning. So this area is going to have some work done on it after the season. But I'm using not much of the space here. There's a few onions that I've had from seed. They're doing okay, but they're just taking their time. But I've got all this space. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to use this for some leeks on this plot. So for a while now, I've been taking this um, approach of planting some things down the grapevine garden, some things on the fig and olive plot, so that if there's a disease or a pest or some problem, like allium leaf miner, onion white rot and things like that, that I've got a fail safe on the other plots, so that the whole harvest isn't wiped out. So I think I'm going to do the same thing with the leeks. I'm going to plant the main bulk down the grapevine garden, because obviously I've got more beds coming up free there. But I think I'm going to plant about 12 to 14 leeks up on the fig and olive plot. And in the winter, how lovely will it be on the stove in the shed to harvest some potatoes, harvest some carrots, onions, and some leeks and make a nice stew or casserole in the shed while I'm gardening. That's the plan. So I'm going to plant some up here as well. So I've got a bit of a kitchen garden going here for winter forward planning. So I'm going to plant some leeks in this bed. And normally you plant them in a little pot and then they look like this. And everyone then see, you see online saying, Plant your leeks when they're pencil thick and then you like this, you're like, when did they become pencil thick? And I have this problem every year. However, this year, I sowed something like this to show you. I planted mine directly in the polytunnel. So as you can see, they're pencil thick. They're ridiculously big. But I'll show you now what I'm going to do with my leeks this year. And I'm so happy that I direct sowed them in the polytunnel in January. And then I get my dibber. This used to be an old fork, um, pointed it off. And then all you do is push down a good depth. Now, everything that you push down, let's get a bit wet so we don't get, the depth that you push down is the depth of white that you'll get on the leak. And then all you do is pop that leak in the hole and fill it with water. And that's it, that's all you do. Leave it a good depth apart. Push down again. If the soil is dry, pour a bit of water first, and that should leave you, so it doesn't look concave in. Pop the leak in. And fill with water. And over a day or two, these will stand up straight and they look fantastic. Right, let's carry on and do the rest. Let's 
so all the leaks are in the bed now. I managed about 18 in this little area. You know, give it a good eight inches at least behind and you can in between and you can hoe in between that as well when you get weeds. And I'm definitely gonna get them in this bed before I turn it no dig. So I'm happy now I've got some leaks in this bed. They'll straighten up in the next couple of days. You don't need to fill the holes in, the water will do that. And in time it'll rain and it'll fill up. And this area will be softer in between the gap and the leak will expand to that area. So that's how I do my leaks. Now, if you haven't got an old fork handle like this, it doesn't matter. You can use an old pole, you know, anything really that, you, that you've got on hand. But I just like this one because it gives it a good thickness and the leather leaks fill up to that space. Whew, it's warm. And if the leaks are like this, don't worry. Take them out, pop them on, or just put them in the bed like this. They'll just take a little bit longer to grow, but I'm glad that I planned them in the polytunnel. If you've got a greenhouse or a polytunnel or a coal frame or something, direct sow some in there, and then you should have pencil thick leaks ready for planting out. So I won't be doing it like this next time. So all the pumpkins are really, really taking off now, which I'm, I'm over the moon with. Oh my God, I've just noticed another flower. So how beautiful that one of the gazanias have come up. That is absolutely stunning. This is what I love about gardening is that one minute it's not there and, <laughs> and another flower. So Michelle, a viewer, gave me a rose bush and look, here's one that's just sneaking in by there and I'm absolutely, oh, look at that, beautiful. So thanks Michelle for giving me that bush that I can put onto the fig and olive and I'm over the moon that the first rose has come up. Right, let's get back to what I was talking about. So all the pumpkins are settling in and this now is looking absolutely beautiful. It's looking so good. But I've noticed one thing, that in the asparagus bed, I think I've got either a pumpkin or cucumber. So I've got one, two, three, four. There's another one there that's growing. Now I've racked my brain why they would be in there. And the only suggestion I got is that maybe I planted some pots in the polytunnel and they didn't germinate and I thrown them onto that bed, which I did do a few times at the start of spring because obviously I didn't want to waste the compost, but I think they finally germinate. And <laughs> so I've got pumpkins or cucumbers in my asparagus bed and I'm actually going to leave them because I think even if they vine and around the asparagus, I don't think they'll do too much damage. If they do, then I'll remove them. But I think that there'll be good coverage for that soil as well. And hopefully then I'll get some more cucumbers or pumpkins, but we'll see, I'll keep an eye on that. So now that's all done, I've decided that this, this one doesn't seem to be growing very well there, so I'm gonna leave it there just in case it comes back, but I've bought this beautiful climber from a store, so I think I'll plant that now and get that in, because it's already shooting up here, so I think it's gonna be a, bit good, sh a good shower. This is the thing that I love about gardening is that Nothing is permanent, you know, you can put something in, take something out. Yeah, this has had it, it's absolutely had it. I was hoping that there would be something there that, you know, some glimpse of life on it, but nothing. So, as everything, out with the old and in with the new. So I'm digging this up. <laughs> There's even some, uh, daffodil bulbs coming through so I'm gonna plant this in here and I think this is like a passion fruit climber so I think this will be fantastic around this archway so let's plant this in now I chose this one because it looks like a, oh yeah healthy root system and I mean there's a lot of climber already here so it's easy for me to to put it around the the trellis system so Pop that in, cover the soil up with some bark to stop the critters climbing it like slugs and also keep the sun off the soil. It's so humid here today. So I think I'll weave this around, trying not to snap it, like so. And then hopefully within a month or so, this should meet up with this one on the other side and we'll have some flowers on this archway. Fingers crossed. So I'll pop a picture up now of this particular climber 
it wasn't that expensive. I think it was about six pound fifty. So hopefully we're on to a winner here. At the moment, it's so humid here and it's warm, but it's it's that stuff was sticky. Do you know what I mean? And it's not enjoyable to garden, but I've got jobs that I need to get done, so I'm plodding on. But that's the fun of gardening. It'll never be the perfect weather that you need. I'm Danny and this is The Great Vine Garden.